Hello and welcome to another episode of Dance Teachers Academy. I am your host, Jose on the mic, and with me is the lovely, amazing Amay. How are you doing today? I'm doing great today in sunny California. We are in the Laguna Beach area, yes. and it is fabulous weather. A lot mm -hmm. better than what we left uh, back right. home in Dallas, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, we have a treat today. Yes. We are in the uh, lovely home and a lovely guest, uh, Miss Maria Henson. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. You look fab. Okay. If you would just get up on that mic, just okay. or slide, or either slide it towards you a little bit more. All right. Okay. There we go. Because I got you turned up about as high as I can possibly get you. And you got that sweet voice. I want to be able to pick that up. I want our fans to pick that That's up as well. Right. Thank you. Uh, we are uh, under a time constraint right now because our, our dear friend is actually on her way to Vegas. Is it not? It is. Okay. Yeah, I'm going All right. To Vegas. In about two hours? Yeah. For her competition, That's Vegas right. Open. Vegas Open. Yes. Oh, so what? she looks amazingly relaxed considering she's about to run a whole competition. <laughs> I Not did, sure how she did I that. did notice that. I don't think you know, I don't think her pulse is uh, over seventy at the moment. Huh? And she had espresso, we saw. Yeah. That. I did I did see her make that. She she doubled up on it too, man. That was pretty good. Thanks for showing me how to do that. Yeah. That that looks pretty cool. I might I might have to get one of those things. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love that machine. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, so back to your um, competition. little competition that you got going on. Uh, <laughs> what's so this all about? <laughs> what's it all about? I, it's like our seventeenth year. I think. Oh wow. Maybe the sixteenth. Okay. I have to check the date yeah. on that. But um, it's held at the Luxor. Um, always the first weekend of March, and um, we're doing really good this year so i'm really excited we've got some new stuff going on too okay we had this big huge wheel of fortune built right so everybody's going to be able to spin it for different awards and stuff Fun. like that too. So that's oh that's really yeah that's got a cool deal yeah and how many oh, entries we are at 6500 so far but we good still have god like, what five days and People right. are late a right. lot. No. So. Do <laughs> dance teachers turn in their entries late? That never happens. It never happens. <laughs> no, I, that's, it's shocking that you would even mention such a thing. I mean, that's, <laughs> I hear about this all the time. As a matter of fact, I, I, I live with a dance teacher, so I understand. And, yeah. and it goes beyond the fact that she's uh, on MST, which I call Mexican Standard Times. So. She's like, oh, 10 minutes Turkish. And it's like, okay, that's at least half hour. So. Mexican time. <laughs> Mexican time, yes. Yeah. So what other things do you have going on at the competition? Well, we have on Wednesday, I hear my... I don't on cue. <laughs> right on cue. We were just talking about that before. <laughs> we were just I know, I was it. wondering when my cat was going to start squawking. <laughs> so we have nightclub night starting on Wednesday night, oh, which fun. is always a really, really fun night. Um, we, have, we host it actually in the Velvet Lounge at the Luxor. Oh, and, nice. Yeah. So it's not really held in the ballroom. It's actually done more like a nightclub a environment. Yeah. yeah. We used to have it in the nightclub, but unfortunately, the Luxor closed their nightclub. So, but the Velvet Lounge Oh, I thought actually, you were going to say the dancers yeah. got too crazy and the <laughs> no, Luxor said, no, no more. Yeah. <laughs> they just it. Oh, dancing okay. on the table a bit. That's what broke the back right there. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, but... Um, but the Velvet Lounge actually is a really cool place. It, it's, it feels like a 1920s bordello type of place. It's really cool. Nice. So, yeah. So I'm excited about that. And let's see. We have Rhythm Day is going to be all day on Thursday. We have Ballroom and Latin on Friday and Smooth on Saturday. And then all of our pro events are on Saturday night, the open pro events. Wow, so that's a pretty good cop yeah, you got going on. Yeah, we've got some really good pro events this year, too, so we're excited about that. Sweet. That's uh, about to it's stretch it out. Like, yeah, to, so they, they, I guess you're starting uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, and that runs until? We're starting more like it, I hate to say it, 7 a.m. We, Seven, we won't air this until after the con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. so wow, they, yeah. that's brutal. Yeah. Seven eight, man. That, so that means what? Hair and makeup at four. You know, this is why I would tell my students: like, yeah, let's mo much. get motivated to improve your dancing so you can sleep later. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, the the better you dance, the more you sleep. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Hey, that's you know what? There's uh, that there's an incentive. Yeah. You know, that well, not only incentive. That might actually be our title. You know. You know. How to de how to sleep more? No, get better it at dancing. It won't be our title, but oh, awesome. <laughs> but thank you for your thoughts. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so no, I, I really appreciate you taking time to talk to us because you are literally going to rush out the door at, after your podcast. Yeah, so really appreciate it. And uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, you know things that we talk on uh, about on the podcast, which mm -hmm. is uh, 
your biggest challenge or one of your biggest challenges, mm -hmm. you know, in your dance career and how you overcame it. And uh, so I'll let you. I would say that probably my biggest challenge in my career was dealing with um, one of the first partnerships that I was in. Uh, my partner was very abusive and I was so young at the time that I didn't really, I didn't really have the self-confidence back then to walk away from it, even though I should have. Mm -hmm. Um, so that I would say that's probably the biggest challenge. You know, I, I moved out to California after that, and from then on, my my career was amazing. I had just the absolute best partners I could ask for after that. Um, in Stuart Cole, Nicholas Cotton, and Paul Holmes, um, they were fabulous. But the partner that I started in the business with was was not really the nicest person, you know, and so that that was. Tough. And I've I've met a lot of girls that go through the same thing. Yes, this is a, a thing yeah. that happens. And so uh, one of the things I think that happens too is that there are so many ladies that want that desire to compete. And sometimes there's a little bit of a shortage of men, mm -hmm. or there, there there was. So there's almost a well, if I want to dance, then I have to put up with this. Now I'm not saying that that's mm -hmm. that's right, but I just feel like sometimes, and like you said, if someone's young, they feel like, oh, this is what I have to deal with, I guess, if I have to dance, because you may be What, it's sort of like paying better. your dues or something like that? Well, how would you like you, feel, like you feel like you have to pay your dues this way, or? Not paying your dues. I don't know if it's about that. I think it's just more that, I think when a woman is in an abusive situation, it, it does something to us kind of mentally and emotionally, um, that I, before I ever experienced it, I just used to think, well, how stupid, why, why would anyone put up with that, right. but once you're actually in that situation, it's not so easy to get out of, you know, because you hope that it'll change. You'll hope that, oh, okay, maybe I'll, I just need to be better. Maybe he'll be nicer today, you know. And sometimes, you see little, <laughs> and sometimes you see little glimmers of hope, right? Yeah, and you think, you oh, maybe and it's going to change. And that right? keeps you kind of hooked because yeah. it's not always awful, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like dealing with someone who's bipolar. It's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> Basically. That's that's basically what you're yeah. what you're describing. Yeah. It's and like, oh, well, this is a good day for him today, so yeah, we're yeah. It should be all right. And then all of a sudden, it just flies off the handle for no reason. Yeah. And I have to say that I'm actually, I'm grateful to have had that experience in my life because it taught me so much, mm -hmm. um, and it helps me help other young girls who are in this situ in this situation too. So. So how would someone recognize that they were in an abusive relationship? I know that sounds silly, but sometimes it's not always physical. Sometimes it can be so. Well, the worst abuse is the mental and emotional abuse. Okay. That's what stays with you the longest. Okay. You know, the physical abuse is horrible, but it, it actually doesn't hurt as much as the emotional abuse does. Okay. And the thing that, that I think the guys are so stupid, <laughs> sorry guys, but it's true, <laughs> is that you're going to get so much more out of your partner if she feels good about herself. Mm -hmm. You know, she's going to be able to go out and sell what, what you're doing and, and be such a better partner if she actually feels good. Yeah. You know, but then again, I have to say, it's not always just the men who are abusive. I've seen plenty of the girls be pretty nasty to their partners too. So I think you just have to realize that you're both on the same path. You want the same goal. So to treat each other poorly is, is a really bad way to try to move forward in your career. Yeah, if you're, you're both rowing in the same direction, you get there faster. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's kind of simple. Yeah. So if somebody's a little bit confused, though, let's say there's a lady or a guy who's confused because they say, oh, well, my partner is extremely passionate about dancing, mm -hmm. so they express themselves very strongly. So, um, But maybe they're confused. There's that line of like where you're really passionate and you want to do something and maybe you express yourself strongly and then abusive. So can you give an example of that? Well, I think that each person is going to be able to handle things differently, right? Some people have a really strong sense of um, self-confidence or a strong sense of who they are. So they may be able to handle an abusive relationship no problem, right? Because they can separate themselves from that. And if, if you can do that, then all power to you, especially if your partnership's doing well, because right. it's not something you have to live with forever. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you find yourself in a place where you're starting to feel um, less positive about who you are, mm -hmm. then that's a time that you either need to get out of the partnership and find something better, or 
find some help somehow to help deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's going to be a little bit different. For me, I, I had to get out of it because it was extremely abusive. It was physically abusive okay. as well as emotional and um, mentally abusive. So that's a, that's uh, a situation yeah, no one should ever put up with. I don't see how you're able to dance in, uh, in that situation. I mean, how did you uh, well, to deal with that? do, but it's not a very positive experience. Right. That's what I'm saying. I just, yeah, you're not selling it. Like you said, you're not selling it. And that, it probably shows out there when you're it dancing too. Come from your heart. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. You're going through the motions at that point. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. No, I felt like I hit gold once I moved to California and started dancing with Stuart Gold because Stuart was so much more experienced than I was. I mean, he had been dancing since he was like seven or eight, and I had started dancing when I was eighteen. But he always looked at himself first. If something didn't feel right, he was like, well, "Let me make sure that I am doing this right." And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sitting there like. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so is this the way? Was, is this how this works? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Stuart was an example of, of like the perfect partner when it came to how he treated. His perfect partners. way to communicate yeah. is like yeah, and you know I always say dancing is a slice of life, and that is a perfect way to handle a relationship. Mm -hmm. How can I make this relationship better? Right. Yeah. So that sounds amazing. Yeah. 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 So how did you? Muster up your strength to, I mean, did you just like leave town no, kind of thing? This or? is going to sound so sad. I was, I had just moved to California. I'd been here for about three months. And the partner um, that, I, that we're talking about here, um, he, we did a, like a little show for the studio. And he was not happy with how I performed it. And so we were in the back and he threw a drink in my face. Oh, and, wow. <laughs> and I had made a promise to myself before that that the next time it happens, mm -hmm. I'm leaving, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But I had to, I actually had to wait for the next time for it to happen. Instead of just walking out right walking then. out right when I decided that, I was like, okay, the next time. But I did it, and it took a lot because I had nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I left everything. I left my partnership. He was also my boyfriend, so we were living together. Mm -hmm. um, I left everything with him. I had no car. I had no place to live. I had a little bit of clothes. And um, one of the girls at the studio saw this happen, and she took me in. She took me in, and I, I just moved in with her and rebuilt my life. Okay. There you go. Good for you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and Maria, Drink in the face. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, and Maria is a beautiful dancer, and she now judges and coaches and has her own competition. Yeah. So I'm so grateful for you to share that because that's not easy to no, talk about that, something like that. That, that. Was, that was a difficult for me. Yes, and I like for people to know that maybe they're in that situation and they... There's hope. There's always, there's there's hope away from that kind of situation. It's Your life is not all about just who you are in a partnership. That's what, another thing I talk about with a lot of the couples I teach because there's always such a pressure to win. I mean, everybody wants to win. But the thing is, there can only be one person that's the winner of that competition. And I had one couple who I drew a line on a piece of paper and I said, okay, I want you to look at this line as your life. I said, the, this portion of this line is your competitive career. And after that, it's about everything else that you do. What kind of teacher do you want to be? Do you want to be a studio owner? Do you want to run a competition? What do you want to do with the rest of your life? Because no one is going to remember what you do I mean, nobody remembers what I did. That's not true. <laughs> I, I won't bring up that. I won't bring up that routine. Okay. Maybe the old timers remember what I did, but all the new people in the business—they don't know. I mean, I went to a studio just a couple months ago. They thought I was a, a pro Latin champion. I was like, no. <laughs> well, that's not me. But thank you. Yeah. So, so it's you know, it's just looking forward, setting goals trying to figure out what you want your entire life to be about mm -hmm. because your competitive career is not that long, really, when you look at the scope of your whole life. And there's so much more to the business than just the, the professional competition. Yes. Right? There's so much more after that. So it's interesting you said that because I had a coach one time that said, do you want to know the secret of having a successful dance career and I was like yes, yes. <laughs> what is it he said find friends outside the dance business <laughs> I went huh <laughs> okay balancing <laughs> your life it made more and more sense yeah. later on I was like oh 
Okay. Now, not to say that, I mean, I when I was competing, I was invested in it. And you, you have, have to, to be. You have to be. Yes. You have to be so invested. But I just feel like some of the, the people that I work with have been so um, devastated and angry. They get really angry about their, about their results and their marks. And, you know, I mean, I understand it in the moment, but just realize it's, it's, um, it's just a competition. You know, and here I say that and I'm running a competition. So <laughs> yeah, but it's more than Well, but, but it has to be fun. This will air right? afterwards. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But we still have to, to get back fun. home. Lessons have to be fun. Yeah, Competitions have to be fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, why are we dancing? Yeah. And I yeah. think the goal should be more than just about how you place. It should be what, what do you want to do for that comp? What do you want to improve on? Yes. How do you want to improve yourself? What do you want to show the audience? What do you want to show the judges? What do you want to feel between the two of you? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and make, make those kind of things your goal that you actually have control over. You don't have control over what the judges put on their piece of paper. No, you do not. Mm -hmm. True, true, true. Yeah. So well, you would know you're a judge. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it's really stressful <laughs> trying to, to mar and that's the other it's thing. It's not easy. I think, no, it's not easy. That's another thing I think a lot of couples need to realize. And I'm not just talking about professional people, but the amateur students and prom students as well. The judges don't have much time mm -hmm. to really analyze everything you do. It's like we're getting glimpses of things and we've got to write it down. We have to make a, a decision. You have to make a fast quickly. decision. Quickly. Yes. And so, you know, it's, it's um, one comp can be completely different than another comp. And to not put too much stock into... A result if you get a bad result at one competition it could be a totally different result the next weekend mm -hmm. for you true you know it's yeah. just it's I just did notice that uh, I'm and I tell people I constantly remind everybody I'm the I'm the novice here I have you know I'm still learning wait a minute did you just say it well, explain that to me because I don't know uh, you get 90 seconds to see six to eight couples mm -hmm. and, you gotta and then that, you got to be right? objective about okay this one's doing this one that one this mm -hmm. You're, what are you spending on average? Six to you know seven seconds on you know what they're doing, and then quickly well, pounce. It depends. It depends on the comp. I mean, sometimes sometimes the winner is clear, right? And you can mark that right away, and then you spend more time looking at the other people to try to figure out where you're going to put them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes the top three are clear, and the bottom three are clear. So then you pick. Okay, I'm going to watch these for this amount of time and mark that real quick, and then you can spend more time on the rest. The toughest comp I ever judged in my entire life was a few years ago at USDC. It was the Pro Smooth. It was the year after Swabic and Marjana retired. Mm -hmm. And we had four couples going for the top spot, right? So it was um, it was the year Mazen and Isabella were dancing. I Pershu. love the inside scoop on <laughs> <laughs> It was Pershu, Nick and Victoria, and um, uh, uh, Galena and Mikkel. They, they were the top for like ones really going for the top spot. Fighting it out for first. They were fighting it out for first yeah. place. I had no idea how I was gonna mark it because it, it's a new year, you know, it's a new championship. So I ended up marking fifth and sixth pretty quick. And then I spent the whole rest of the time watching the other four. Wow. The music ended, I still hadn't made up my mind. Wow. And I saw the runner the runners coming up to get the marks. I'm like <laughs> and I had to make a decision. I have to. I have to make that decision. But that's another thing just to go to show you. It's not always clear. So you might be, you know, the person who won that event is not that different than the couple that came forth. Yeah. Right. We're not right. saying a it's, coin toss, but, yeah, you're pretty yeah, close okay, to you it. You've got to find something that's, okay, what's my priority this time here? And I've got to mark, I've got to mark that. I've got to go with what I see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes it's so close and it's so hard to make mm -hmm. a decision. Well, there you go. Well, I don't know if... The Life is a judge. <laughs> so be know, kind right? to them next time be you see them. Be kind. Be kind. And she'll give you a cookie. Uh, Maybe. That's right. that's right. we have, you have a bunch of cookies behind you, Maria. I have about 400 cookies behind me. Yes. Oh. <laughs> my, my friend, that you baked all by yourself. Well, not no. by myself. I had help. My, my, my very good friend Martha and her sister Marie came. Um, and this is kind of a new sort of a business venture that I'm that I'm kind of getting into with my friends Martha and Debbie um, it's called dancing through the kitchen and we're starting a blog oh, I like that. oh there we go yep dancing through the kitchen I'll get that information scrolling along here <laughs> yes. on the podcast yeah. I still got 
a long, I've actually got the blog and I've got the Facebook page and I've got the email and all that stuff, but the blog is a mess right now. I need help with trying to get that together, but I've got some f fun ideas for that. I, um, I'm excited about it. I love to cook. It's how I relax. Um, same thing with my friends, Debbie and Martha. And we get to, we have these girls weekends and this is sort of how the whole thing came about. We have these girls weekends where we have all these plans to do all these great things, and then we end up just staying home, cooking, and drinking wine. Well, you know what? That sounds pretty good, actually. <laughs> Can so, I be in that club? In. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. But you're a very healthy eater. For the to, most part. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Nazi about the way I eat, yeah. even though I think some people think I, they have that impression somehow. I follow the 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time, I'm really good, and then 20% I eat whatever I once and well, I you know, you I you gotta cheat, you gotta have a cheat day. Yeah, I mean, you have to still enjoy. Sure. What you, I mean, what you who doesn't eat. like a big greasy cheeseburger with bacon and you know <laughs> mushrooms and? <laughs> Especially yeah. after yeah. the competition. Well, see, Especially the after the comp. Yeah. I'm gonna have a stomach ache, so then I think, okay, is it gonna be worth the stomach ache? And sometimes it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you get a good burger. What you don't want is to get like a really crappy burger when you when no, you yeah. No, if it's, you that's you gotta go. Yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. You gotta put the yeah. time in. It's well, see, like, no. for me, the problem is gluten. So I have to decide oh. sometimes. If I'm in San Francisco and there's a sourdough roll with butter, I'm oh. having that sourdough yes. roll. Yeah, with butter. I'm with you. So I, when it's hot, yes. the butter just melts right oh, off. Yeah. It starts yeah, yeah, dripping yeah. on your plate. Yeah. So I'm ready to go right now. Yeah, but it has to be worth it. And I mean, I've gone to dinner with my friends and they're eating something and it looks really good. And I always go, is that going to be worth this stomach ache for me? And they'll tell me, yeah or no. There so, you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. But yeah, you have to have a cheat day. Otherwise, your body goes crazy. I mean, it's, I, I mean, I, I definitely can feel it when I don't eat well, and then I don't like the way I feel, so then I want to eat well. I actually like eating well, mm -hmm. you know, but, but you have to still enjoy. You know, so where are these 400 cookies destined? These 400 cookies are destined for Vegas Open. Oh, that, those are going to the Open? They are going Damn, to Damn, I might be going open. to Vegas with you. <laughs> do you want to try one of these cookies? Uh, uh yeah. yeah. Well, okay. well, well. <laughs> 399 cookies are going to make it. <laughs> so I, I have regular or gluten-free. Which one would Ooh, you I like? Oh, I want to try the gluten-free. The gluten-free are actually better. Oh, really? Like say, if I, yeah, they actually are. I, in my opinion. Of course, they're going to be on the bottom. <laughs> 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 Let me just move this. So here is a gluten-free. Great. Would you like gluten-free or regular? You know, I'll do that. try one of each? Yeah, we'll do one of <laughs> uh, both. You, you know what? Why don't you both do one of each? Tell me which one you like. Oh, there you go. Taste you know test. What? Uh, the blind test. Don't tell me which is which. <laughs> Let me see here. I won't tell you. Just, yeah. I won't tell you Thank which you. one is which. So, yeah. So, the idea behind this blog is, I'm, of course, it's going to have a section for recipes that, that we do. We're going to have um, places that we recommend, you know, for the different cities that we go to. Um, I want to have things on dancing. I studied a lot of kinesiology after I retired, and so there's a lot of exercises that I have for postural correction. Um, oh, I'm and interested posture in that. Is, posture is so important in yes. dancing, not just aesthetically, but the way that it helps us move. So I, I want to have a section on that. That's actually just, pretty good. <laughs> it's a good cookie, isn't it? <laughs> I like this one better. Oh, yeah. You like that one better? Yeah. Which one do you like better? I haven't gotten any oh, other okay. one yet. I like delicious. It. So, um, and then my, the thing yeah, keep I'm, talking, Marie, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I'm actually really excited about doing with this blog is I want to have, I have, we have, I have so many friends in dancing that like to cook. And so I want to go to their kitchen, kind of like what you're doing here with me. So like my friend Heather Smith loves to cook. So she lives close by. So I want to go to her kitchen and I'm going to call, it's going to be a vlog, right? And I'm going to call it Dancing Through Heather's Kitchen. And so she'll make whatever her favorite recipe is. I love is. that idea. And then I'll go to Tony Meredith's kitchen, who he has an amazing garden in, the, in downtown Columbus. He grows a lot of his own food. They have chickens and all kinds of really cool stuff like that. And he loves to cook, so I'll call that Dancing Through Tony's Kitchen. So that's kind of a... I love that. That's there you go. the plan. Yeah, so I'm really excited about doing that. So when are we uh, expecting to get this thing, uh, lighting a candle on this? After Vegas Open. <laughs> <laughs> of course, after the Open. <laughs> It's yeah, I couldn't on her really, mind. I mean, it's it, it's kind of in the works. Yeah, it's in the works. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I'm yes, excited. yes, and it's so fun to see dancers, you know, 
talking about other things that they're passionate about. See, we don't just talk about dancing. No, well, she is <laughs> dancing through someone's kitchen, so <laughs> well, you do have to tie it in at some point. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, we really do appreciate you taking the time because we know you're on a tight schedule. Yes, you are. Very We've got to get you sweet. out of here. Thank yes. You. All right. For you yeah. to join us. Thank you. All right, folks. Well, uh, I'm sorry this had to be short, but this uh, young lady has uh, quite a bit of work to do. Miss um, Hanson, thank you for uh, having us here at your home. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Lovely. Uh, May. Thank you Jose, as well. Thank We're going to enjoy this beautiful weather, yes. folks. Uh, this has been another episode of Dance Teachers Academy. Thank you for watching.